Today, we're checking out how we take this height blend and then put it together into a single texture and export it out so we can use it as a displacement like you see here. Let's get into it. So here we are back in the same world where we uh, made the height blend last time. The only difference is I have gone ahead and gotten some mega scans textures here and I've applied them to our setup, but this is our exact setup that we created last time with our height blend and everything. It's a simple three layer setup where I have gravel in between and moss on top. So over here, you can see some, some moss on top, some gravel, and of course, if I tweak the values on the stuff, I can go ahead and increase the amount of gravel in between the bricks, decrease it based on the height I want. So assuming that this is it, how do we then take this very flat plane and turn it into three-dimensional displacement? It's pretty simple. So we start by just making a new blueprint actor and we're just called this a BP height bake. Let's go ahead and open it up. There it is. So what I personally like to do is add a scene component and then replace that with our default root. All this does is get rid of that icon. If you are fine with having that icon, obviously you can keep it in. It doesn't hurt anything. I just don't like having the default blueprint icon unless I actually want it to be there. And then we just need to add a plane. Why a plane? Because it's a great way of just seeing the default setup uh, on here. It'll automatically UV'd automatically uh, set up for what we need to preview the actual result. Then we go into our construction script. So we grab the plane and we go set material because we're going to need to assign the material to this plane that we're actually going to be baking, of course. And we can just right click a material, promote it to a variable, keep it called material, that is fine. And we're going to need to expose this. After that, we just need a simple function. So we just make one and we'll call it bake. And from here, we can go ahead and call draw material to render target. So this node will take our material and convert it into a, a texture for a render target, which we will be making shortly. But we go ahead and convert the texture render card target to a variable. And we go ahead and expose it as well by hitting this eye icon. And we plug in our material. So just like that, everything is plugged in, everything is exposed that we need. And the only thing left to do is select this bake and make it call in editor. So that way it exposes the button. So if I hit compile and save and take a look at it in the world, you can see we now have our material, our texture target and our bake button. Of course, the bake doesn't really do anything right now because nothing is plugged in. So let's make the things that we need to plug in. So we need a render target, you just search it up. You can grab yourself a render target. I'm going to call it RT height blend. And then we're going to open it up. In here, we can specify the resolution we want the texture to be. So I'm going to make it a 4K texture. It's going to tell you, uh, are you sure you want to do a 4K texture? It is a lot of pixels because it's assuming they're going to be doing things live. We're not. So we're going to set it to be a 4K. Everything else is fine by default at the current setup. Close out of here. Don't need this anymore. Close out of that. So now we have the render target. We can plug that into our uh, texture render target. And now we need to grab our material, which we can just go and navigate to it and grab and place the instance in. So there we go. So now our plane has the same material as this object. So you think, okay, well now I can just click a bake, right? Well, not exactly. If you hit bake, it's still black. And the reason is, by default, it takes the emissive channel. So what we need to do is now take this height information, this compiled height information, and put it into the emissive channel, and then we can bake it. So let's make a modification to our material to accommodate for that. Go ahead and navigate to our original base material. Now if we open it up, right, we only have this attribute layers and the output. So that's all we have, but this is where we're gonna add the control to reroute our height information into our emissive channel when we need to. So we're going to go ahead and expand this and separate these guys out. And from here, we're going to go and get material attributes. So here we can go ahead and specify what we want. So we're definitely going to need to get our emissive and we're also going to need to get our custom UV seven, which is what we use to push our height information through. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and just make a named reroutes for all of these. 
And there we go. So now we have the ins of them. So effectively, this is our all our material attributes. This is just the missive color. This is just the height. And so I've named them as such. And over here, we just need to set material attributes. And here we just need to set the emissive color. We don't need to set the height because obviously the height is not actually part of our final result in terms of the texture. So here we're gonna head and grab our material attributes. And then here is where we specify what do we wanna use for emissive. So we're going to get a static switch parameter and we're gonna say height bake, question mark. So if we are going to use a height bake, then we want to use height in. And if we don't want to use a height bake, well, then we want to use our regular emissive. Because if we're using, if you're not baking, maybe you do have an emissive setup in your material and you don't want to uh, overwrite that. So only when you're doing the height baking, do you want to actually use that in the emissive color. With that, let's go ahead and save, close out of here. And now if we go and open up our instance, and in the details panel, separate from our layer setup where we had before, we now have this height bake. So we can turn that on and enable it. And you'll see it has pretty much put our height information. That blend of all of it is now inside of the emissive channel. So obviously it is uh, very bright and it is our full range that we want. But now with it on, we can come here, navigate to our render target so we can see the update and hit bake. Ah, here is a something that I actually forgot to uh, show you guys last time. Shader is using too many samples. So currently I have plugged in too many samples. And what it should have been done last time, and this is something I did forget in the description, I'm gonna show you guys now, is in your material layer, you wanna set all of your texture nodes to, instead of being texture sample from texture asset, you want a shared wrap. And this allows you to use mo more uh, samples than you would normally have. So you want to set all these to shared wrap. And just like that, we now are using only nine out of 16 samples. So now if I do the same thing, if I come here and I hit bake and I take a look here. So if I hide the alpha, there's our full texture and our full resolution. It is set to HDR, which is fine right now. It doesn't matter for us uh, because we've left things as default. We're not using this as a full texture for ourselves. Um, if we did, then we could change the compression settings, obviously, and change it uh, accordingly. But for where we're using it, this is fine. So now we need to apply this displacement onto this plane. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to navigate to the plane sample it and I'm just going to make a copy of it for myself. So I'm going to take this and I'm just going to put it into the material section for myself. Copy here. So now in the materials I have this plane. So let's open it up and we can go in here and first of all we're going to turn on nanite for it. Uh, we're going to set the trim relative error to 0 0.05 and now we're going to add the displacement map. So we can click the plus button, open this up, and now we pipe in the texture. So here's our baked texture, apply it in. The magnitude, we can go ahead and just say one for now. Hit apply changes and give it a moment. And there we go, it should be done. Now for preview purposes, let's go ahead and actually apply, uh, slow down the camera. You can use your zoom if you guys don't know. When you're moving, you can zoom out and it'll go slower and zoom in, it'll go faster. So when you see me pan forward and back and then all of a sudden the camera's moving slower or faster, that is why. Instead of using this and dragging it around, I like to use the scroll wheel. It's a little more um, intuitive for me. But there it goes, there's the slight displacement from what we have set up. You can see how it's now displaced. So if I hit save, and now in here, I'm gonna go ahead and swap it out. So. I come here and go ahead and right click, replace with plane static mesh. And we're just gonna go ahead and reapply the instance onto it. So there's our now displaced mesh. Now, of course you can see all the nice displacement and everything on it, but it's of course still has that emissive. So now we just need to go and open up the material instance, go to details, turn off the height bake, 
save it. And now you have your full blended height on all that information and you now have it displaced. Now, maybe you want it a little more. If you want it to be a little more, you can just open up your plane again, drop this down, maybe set it to something like maybe 2.5. You want it to be a little more pushed out, hit apply, give it another moment. Depending on how complex your mesh is and the resolution, it will uh, take longer or shorter on this one. There you go, it is now done. Save, and now it is displaced. Further, you can really see those bricks coming out. Now, of course, you do have the stretching if you push things too far. So that's always something you need to be wary of. But, I mean, look at the difference between that and that, right? If you're just at this distance, you can't see the dif the difference in the stretching. It's just, it's too small. But just the shadowing and the lighting information you now get because of its displaced nature is so much more. And now... At any point when we create this height blend of a material, when we use our height blend to assemble everything and we want to put the moss on top, we want to put everything in between, we can then take that all that information, all that height information, put it into our blueprint, turn on a checkbox and bake it, and just like that, we'll have all our information. So I hope this has been informative to you guys. You can, of course, use this for anything you want. You just pipe it into this blueprint that we have gone ahead and created, which I just realized is inside the Mega Scans folder. Let's go ahead and quickly move that over to our Materials folder. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Now it's all in the correct location. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope this was uh, informative for you guys. And if you have suggestions on the next tutorial to see, always feel free to leave it in the com comments down below. I have lots of tutorials to bring you guys. It will just take a little bit of time. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.